My name is Steve McGall, and joining me today is uh, John Gruscio. How you doing, John? Doing pretty good, Stephen. All right. Well, tonight we are going to be talking about all of our Oscar picks, from Best Cinematography to Best Director, all the way on up to Best Picture. So, without any further ado, John, uh, why don't we just dive right into this? Um, Sounds good to me. All right. So... Best Cinematography, uh, we have The Grandmaster uh, by Philip Lesord, Gravity by Emmanuel Luzbecki, Luz- Lubezki, goodness, uh, Inside Lewin Davis by Bruno Del Bonnell, Nebraska by Feeden Papa Michael, and Prisoners Roger A. Deakins. John, uh, where, do you, where do you see this one going? I know you have a favorite here. Uh, what are you thinking? Uh, well, Stephen, as we talked about before, uh, my personal favorite for this race, uh, for this award, is uh, Roger Deakins for Prisoners. He is a uh, he has worked with uh, director Sam Mendes numerous times. I believe actually won an award for when he worked with him on Road to Perdition, and he also uh, did Skyfall recently. Uh, just prisoners overall. Just the way it, the way it looks for a for a twisted drama that it is, because of his cinematography, it truly makes the movie how it is. And I mean, there are so many. I mean, I've seen Inside Llewellyn Davis. I've seen Nebraska. I've seen Gravity. All of these are great films, but with such such a hard hitting drama as Prisoners was, you really needed somebody who, with their shots, could really envision that. And I think out of all of these films, I think he did the best job. Well, I that's where I disagree. Uh, I don't see how Gravity loses this one. Mm-hmm. It was such an epic, epically shot space drama that I don't see I don't see how anyone else could really win this. Uh, now, in all fairness, I will say I did not see Prisoners. So I don't have too much to lean on against it. I'm not gonna lie, but I don't see how Gravity loses this one. The it was just shot so well. There's so much going on. I think it's gonna probably win a couple of awards. Um, uh, I agree with you. And I think that this is one that they that they take. It's it's just epic, and it has a, space has never been done this well before. Very true. I saw Gravity, loved it thoroughly. I uh, thought it was very well casted. I thought Alfonso Cuaron really hit it out of the park for something that's been a, a passion project of his for years. I will say this, though, with Prisoners not getting the much-needed loved, much needed love that I think it deserved, I think that makes Deacons a wild card. Also, he has been around for a very long time, and there have been rumors that the next couple of years he could retire and he's been a, he's worked with all sorts of directors. With that being said, and since this movie was not given, I believe the proper love that it deserved, that could make him a bit of a wild card. Yeah, I can. I agree. I agree. So we'll we'll agree to disagree <laughs> with Sounds this one. Good. But uh, join us. We're going to have an after show after we're after the Oscars sometime. Maybe that night. Probably the next day, because the Oscars tend to go pretty late into the evening uh, for us folks in the Midwest. Uh, If we could stay up, we will. If not, we will do it uh, probably the next day. So stay tuned for that, and you can find out who wins. I'm betting on myself, because I don't like to lose. So moving on. With that being said, we are going to Best Animated Feature, which uh, was pretty good this year. We had a, a lot... Well, we had Pixar, so that always makes things interesting. So, uh, The Croods, uh, Despicable Me 2, Ernest and Celestine, Frozen, The Wind Rises. I'm going to go with... I'm going with Frozen. Frozen was a fantastic movie. But, at the same time, it's Miyazaki's last movie. The Wind Rises was pretty epic. It was beautiful, as most of his movies tend to be. So, kind of a toss-up for me. So, I could see them giving it to Miyazaki, 
because of who he is and it's his last movie. But Frozen was probably the animated feature of the year, if you ask me. It just had such a had a great story. It was funny. Had a, an amazing cast. I don't know how you can vote against it. I liked all these movies for the most part. Despicable Me too, one of my favorites. But that's just because I'm a big kid. My pick's Frozen. Too too solid of a movie for it uh, not to win this year. What are you thinking? Um, me personally, uh, as <laughs> as much of a film guy as I, I claim to be, I really don't get into the animated films that much, and, uh, which is hilarious because I have a girlfriend who is in love with Disney movies. Uh, I've seen I've seen bits and pieces of both the Crudes and I love Despicable Me too. I love the first one. Um, I've heard really solid, really solid things about The Wind Rises. And Ernest and Celestine, I'm going to be honest, I did not know what that was until about ten, ten minutes ago. Um, for me personally, uh, just knowing my experience when I've seen the Oscars, I know that the Academy does lean toward, uh, toward foreign directors, foreign films. So I could see the wind rises. With that also being said, as much buzz as Frozen has gotten, yep. I could also see it winning as well. Because if I'm not mistaken, Brave got about the same amount of buzz last time around, and they they won. And there was, I mean, uh, if I can remember, it was pretty much a it, it was a shutout. They won. Yeah, questions. there wasn't much. I don't think there was much going up against. I don't have anything in front of me right now, but I don't think there's a lot going up against Brave. Uh, but all you really need to know about Frozen is that Josh Gad is a hilarious snowman. So, I mean, mm-hmm. And Kristen Bell plays the princess, and Adina Menzel plays her sister. Because I know yeah. that uh, all of these features, I believe, Despicable Me Too and Frozen, both Pharrell Williams, uh, who did the song Happy, he'll be performing, and Kristen Bell and Adina Menzel will be performing as well at the yeah. Oscars. That'll be exciting. It'll be something to look forward to. It really will be. I, I kind of... Uh, part of me wants... Miyazaki to win just because he does cool stuff and it would be interesting to see if they you know, decide to really give the Japanese the credit for some of the stuff that they're doing I mean it had a great cast Joseph Gordon-Levitt, John Kransky Emily Blunt so I mean this this did not go without a star-studded cast either and you really have to, you really have to give Miyazaki credit he really went for the a for the a listers that he could possibly get, and these are a listers in our in my generation that are you know just now starting to get like real stardom, and like for them you must think how much of an honor this must have been to work with someone like that on his way out. Yeah, and for those of you who don't really know much about Miyazaki, he's very well renowned in in Japan. The Wind Rises is a story, uh, a look at a life of Jiro Horikoshi, a man who designed a Japanese fighter plane during World War II. Definitely worth a watch. I don't think it's a very long movie, if memory serves me correct. Uh, it's about yeah, two yeah, hours. I think it's like 90 minutes. Uh, actually, it's about two hours, according to IMDb. So, okay. So it, doesn't feel, IMDb. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's that long of a movie. Definitely something uh, worth watching for those of you who haven't seen it, or maybe don't don't dip into that. It's not really my cup of tea to watch the Japanese films, uh, the anime scenes, not my scene. But this is definitely a movie that that should be seen by most. So I think we're kind of in, a, in agreement. Frozen is probably going to take this. Too much hype around it, and but we both see. would like to see Wind Rises win as well. Definitely. So that that's going to be interesting. So that's one that I'm definitely going to be watching uh, very closely. Moving to our, our next award that would be going out for Best Actress in a Supporting Role. Uh, this is where one of my favorite movies of the year comes in. John, I'll let you take who you think is going to win this first. All right. Well, thank you, Stephen. I think, hands down, without question... Jennifer Lawrence is going to take this. She is going to be a two-year Academy Award winner, same as Christoph Holtz was the previous two years. I say this in all due respect because you (laughs) have the almighty Julia Roberts here. I saw uh, August Osage County. I will admit 
probably some of the best work I've seen her do in the last 10 years. I, alongside Meryl Streep and such an awesome cast featuring Abigail Breslin, Benedict Cumberbatch, and uh, Chris Cooper. With mm-hmm. that being said, though, Jennifer Lawrence, and I always love uh, her Oscar speech, I'm the new Meryl Streep, or she said something to that extent in an interview. She almost is. This woman came out of nowhere almost four years ago, got an Academy Award nomination for Winter's Bone, her first real film. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, you start seeing her show up in Hunger Games, X-Men, and she won her first Academy Award for Silver Linings Playbook, which I believe was Best Actress, if I'm not mistaken, Mm -hmm. which was an awesome movie. And her performance in American Hustle is not as great as Silver Linings, but it was still pretty good. It was great in a different way in that it was it was completely epic and out of character for anything that she's done before. It was such a perfect movie for her to do at this point in time to get herself out of that typecasting that she was uh, Silver Lining Playbook kind of broke the mold getting her out of, you know, the whole Hunger Games thing that she's going to be wrapped up in a number of years. But like you said, it's phenomenal that she got Hunger Games from coming from nothing, doing one movie, and next thing you know, she's cast in arguably the biggest female role of you know, the, these movies that are coming in the next five to ten years. So she really kind of just dominated that role and just went with it. And I agree. I think Lawrence should win in American Hustle. American Hustle is one of my favorite movies. I'll spoil it. I don't care. It was one of my favorite movies of the year. It was such a breath of fresh air, uh, especially uh, in a comedy drama that's been kind of stagnant. It hasn't been stagnant, but it, it's been much of the same comedy. You can't take anything away from Julia Roberts, though. She was awesome in Osage County. That was... That movie was built for actor actors and actresses. I to, can agree with you to, to own it. And and you put Meryl Streep and Julia Roberts in the same room for two hours and nothing but greatness can come of that. So this is kind of one of those toss ups you that you don't know what the Academy is really gonna do because they're fickle. And they may give it to Julia just because she's Julia Roberts. But I mean, I agree with you. I, th- saw. I agree with you. I think uh, Jennifer Lawrence deserves it. As we all saw a couple of weeks ago, they did the story uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, they make the plates for all the awards. Mm-hmm. So technically, everybody's a winner. I uh, said, so we'll just have to find out that night. I will say this. I'm always a fan of wild cards. Every time I watch the Oscars, I'm always a fan of the wild cards. And I will say from all I've heard about uh, Lupita Nyong'o from 12 Years a Slave, mm-hmm. there is a chance that possibly she could be an upset, which I think for her, she is a, she was brilliant in 12 Years a Slave, Very, just a very beautiful actress, did a very great job. I think for her, if this would be like her first film, if she were to get an Oscar, I think it would do so much for her career. But like I said, as we both have pretty much agreed, I think Lawrence will get it. I think the only the only two people she really has to fear would be Roberts, and then maybe behind Roberts would be Lupita Nyong'o. Yep, yep, I agree. I agree. I wouldn't be surprised if Julia Roberts wins this by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm pulling for Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, she, honesty, she did a fantastic role. In all honesty, I don't think Lawrence would be offended either. She already won Best Actress. <laughs> yeah, it'd be hard to call her an underdog. I mean, she's to get I mean, Best exactly. Supporting Actress role. It's just uh, another thing on her resume. Very true. But moving on, if you don't agree with me with this next one, then I'll slap <laughs> you. <laughs> Best actor in a supporting role. We have Barkhad Abdi for Captain Phillips, which was a great movie. I think it. Did, I don't think it really got enough press as it probably should have. Bradley Cooper in American Hustle. Michael Fassbender in Twelve Years a Slave. Jonah Hill in The Wolf of Wall Street, and Jared Leto in The Dallas Buyers Club. Who do you got here? Who me? Uh, all right. Well, first off, I should go ahead and say. 
that uh, I thought about boycotting this category for a while until I saw Wolf of Wall Street because there was only one name out of all the movies that I saw this year that I thought deserved a credit, and that's Jake Gyllenhaal for Prisoners. He did such a tremendous job in that film, took on a whole new embodiment embodiment of a character that I've that we've seen time and time again as the flawed detective trying to solve a case. You want to talk about uh, a whole we, new embodiment of a character? I mean, Jared Leto as a woman. I understand. No, I said, I understand. Uh, with that being said, I do. Uh, I have seen Dallas Buyers Club. Jared Leto did a great performance. He did a great job. I think he will win. I do think he will win. Although he I, win. Uh, the two the two people in this category, who I would like to see win, other than Jared Leto, as much as I did like his performance, is I'd like to see Michael Fassbender or Jonah Hill win. The reasons I say that is both of these actors are very talented. Uh, Michael Fassbender, as we all know, who did a terrific job in Shame mm -hmm. and was nominated for Best Actor but lost out to George Clooney. Uh, he did a terrific job in 12 Years a Slave, a very heart-wrenching performance uh, of a slave owner, uh, and, I mean, who was in love with one of his slaves. I mean, it's just such a gut-wrenching performance. I mean, really had to put it all out there. And on the other side of the coin, we have Jonah Hill, who I still, to this day, just because that's the first place I saw him, always think of Seth from Superbad. Yeah. But now we have him as this embodiment of Leonardo DiCaprio's best friend, Donny Azoff, from Wolf of Wall Street in the infamous Qua uh, Quaalude scene. Yes. And, of course, as most people know, Jonah Hill first got his first ever Oscar nomination for Moneyball, which I believe was in 2011 alongside Brad Pitt. And, and he did a fantastic job in that movie as he well. Was, he was awesome in that movie. He was fantastic. I was blown away uh, watching that movie because that was his first really step outside of mm -hmm. his typical comedy role. But I agree with you there a little bit. Jonah Hill was awesome. The Wolf of Wall Street was awesome. I loved that movie. I thought it was great. I don't think a lot of people like it. I know my mom saw it, and she was like, that movie was stupid. She's like, Only it's, just about drug, it's about drugs and sex. And I was like, yeah, you just described the perfect equation for a good movie. <laughs> the um, only critique I had is that it was way too long. It was Scorsese. It was, which means I loved every minute expect? of it, but I would it have was... preferred to get out at a reasonable hour. <laughs> I agree. It was a touch on the long side, but when you knew the, who the director was going in, you kind of expected you get the jumbo popcorn, you get you know a lifetime supply of soda and a catheter, <laughs> and you just go for it. Uh, that's, uh, all, would, that's all you would... can really do. But Jonah, I would love to see Jonah Hill win this. It's hard, though, to say... I, just because I love Jonah Hill, but Jared Leto deserves the win. As good as Jared Jonah Hill was, Jared Leto was awesome. You Jared don't even Leto recognize him. Amazing. You don't even recognize him. And like, even though I knew Jared Leto was playing her, like it was five minutes into the movie, but I was like, oh shit, that's that's Jared Leto. Shut the front door. Exactly. It's like he doesn't look too bad. I will say this: I, I I would I would be happy if Jared Leto won. I really would. Cause I think he did a fantastic job. But also, it it uh, it it uh, fills my mind with curiosity. Jonah Hill, as a comedic and now now starring up as a dramatic actor a bit, he is in such a great role right now that if he were to win an Academy Award, what that would do for his career. He is in that state of he's in his late twenties, early thirties. He's still doing comedy, but he's able to do drama. If he were to win the Academy Award, that would just elevate him so high in his career. I agree. I agree. Career wise, it would be much better for Jonah Hill than Jared Leto. Exactly. As Jared Leto's career as an actor is part time to his job as lead singer for Thirty Seconds to Mars. So I mean I always loved Urban Legends, so I mean that's that's all good. <laughs> right. Right. 
So it, it's it's big for both actors in all reality because Jared Leto's acting career from this role, regardless, is probably going to boost him up to more acting roles outside of his uh, gig doing Thirty Seconds to Mars. So that's good to see, but it's another toss up. It, it's hard to say. I'm going. I'm picking just to pick to pick to win. Got to pick Jared Leto. And Jonah I, I Hill agree. wins. I'll be clapping. I'll be happy as can be. But uh, we agree a little too much. This is awful. But <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to argue against some of these in all reality. Again, best directing: American Hustle, David O. Russell, Gravity, Alfonso Curian, Nebraska, Alexander Payne, Twelve Years a Slave, Steve McQueen, The Wolf of Wall Street, Martin Scorsese. How the hell do you pick between these movies? It's I impossible. Impossible for me to pick, to be perfectly honest with you. Again, Gravity was such a well-shot movie through and through. To do something in space is incredibly difficult. The scenes that they shot were amazing. It'd be easy to pick Alfonso Curian. Hell, it'd be easy to pick David O. Russell, American Hustle, like we said. One of the best comedies we've had in ten years. I would have to just because it was so unique. I don't think a lot of people really knew what to expect to go in, and you're like, "This is, this is hilarious," and you don't even expect it to be a comedy. Twelve Years a Slave, epic. Steve McQueen, Scorsese again, Wolf of Wall Street. I think I'd like to see maybe Scorsese win because I liked Wolf of Wall Street so much. I don't think it was the best directed movie of the year, though. If I'm picking one, it's Gravity, but it's it's a toss up. Any one of these could win. I'd say maybe Nebraska's probably the the wild card out of this. I don't think any. I'd say Alexander Payne, David O. Russell, they're probably the wild cards here. I'm picking Gravity. Which who do you have in this one, John? Um. Well, if we go with the trends, then Gravity would probably be the winner. Because Alfonso Cuaron has pretty much won every award in this category, from Golden Globes to BAFTAs to Screen Actors Guild, he has won. Uh, so I think it's a clear indicator who's going to win this race. However, I would say this, along with two, I wouldn't say necessarily newcomers, but newcomers to the Best Director category, you have Steve McQueen, who did an amazing job with 12 Years a Slave, and Alfonso Cuaron with Gravity. But alongside them, you have three veterans mm -hmm. who have been overlooked many, many times for their films. Me, personally, I loved Wolf of Wall Street. It had everything a great Scorsese film should have. It had violence, sex, drugs, act. I mean, just great acting also. Everything you would love about a Scorsese film. Yes, a yep. little bit too long. I don't think it was his best film, though. And I I hate to say that, but I honestly mm -hmm. just don't think it was his best. Uh, yeah. With that being said, Alexander Payne, who I think I think he did win for the Descendants. I'm not 100 percent on that. Uh, I believe he did, but either way, he's done so many other great films that have been overlooked. Me personally, I would love to see David O. Russell finally win because I think that he was overlooked for Fighter. I think he was yep. overlooked for Silver Linings, even though I think Ang Lee did a great job with Life of Pi. Mm -hmm. I think he would be a great... Uh, I think he would be my ultimate choice to win, although I will have to say that I think Pride Gravity will win just based on that it's taken everything in this category. And when you're dealing with... Ba from BAFTAs to Screen Actors Guild to Golden Globes, yes, the Academy is a bit different, but all three of those meshed up together, you get the Academy. I mean... Yeah. Same mindset. With that being said, you kind of mentioned we kind of had Life of Pi last year, which was kind of that movie not a lot of people saw was, you know, this art piece of a movie that kind of came out of nowhere to win a bunch of awards. Do you see any movie here this year that's like Life of Pi that wasn't seen as much? Do you think is going to come in and and sweep? You know, sweep a bunch of, uh, steal a bunch of awards. I mean, to be completely honest, I still remember when they were doing um, 
I'm trying to think. It was the Hollywood uh, Reporter. They were doing Oscar roundtables at the, uh, I think it was around November of last year. And uh, one of the movies that they thought was actually going to be a big Oscar contender, and it was along the lines of Life of Pi, was The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Yeah. And I actually had thought, because I had seen a little bit of footage, and I saw it over the Christmas break. It was okay. It wasn't as good as I thought it would have been. But mm-hmm. if it had been a lot better, I would have actually thought Ben Stiller would have this like locked and loaded. And it would have been amazing to see him. But me personally, I, I loved Gravity. I loved all of these films. But I would have to say, for me personally, American Hustle, I loved it. I'd love to see uh, Martin Scorsese win for Wolf of Wall Street. It was a great film. I just don't think it was his best. But uh, for me, it's going to be American Hustle. That's my pick. I would agree. I would agree. I think American Hustle could come in and steal a bunch of awards. They probably should. I don't know if it'll get the type of recognition. I think it's got a decent amount of traction, though. But I don't remember. Do you remember how many awards the Wolf of Wall Street won uh, with uh, the previous award show? Names escaping Golden me. Globes. Golden Globes. Golden Globes, I know Leo took Best Actor in a Comedy. Um, I, I think Terrence Winter got Best uh, best Adapted Screenplay. Other so, than that, and that's another thing. Terrence Winter, who I don't know if many people know, is one of the main writers behind of uh, Boardwalk Empire, which Scorsese also produces. He could very well win Best Adapted Screenplay for Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. He's a very strong contender. Although I think Boardwalk Empire's kind of gone downhill lately. But that's yeah, a whole It's going to be their story. final season, I think, this year. Yeah, maybe I'll finish watching this season then. <laughs> but that's a whole other podcast. So, best directing, I'm going Alfonso Cuaron. Gravity's going to win a bunch of awards. They've pretty much swept this. Nice to see Scorsese win, but like you said, wasn't his best work. Best actress in a leading role. What are your thoughts on actresses? This is another tough category. Um, personally, I would love to see Amy Adams win. Just like David or Russell, I think she has been overlooked many times. I think American Hustle is probably one of the finer films she's done even though she plays a con artist. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that she did a great job in The Fighter. I be- Did she win for The Fighter? I think she did. Let's... No, it was Melissa Leo who won for The Fighter. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because I thought she... I, I don't think she's won yet, but I think she would be very... I think it's her time. I think she could pull it off, even though she's gone up against this just laundry list of A-listers. <laughs> I, I, we've, like I said, we've got Amy Adams, American Hustle, Kate Blanchett, who uh, who surprised a lot of people at the Golden Globes for mm-hmm. Blue Jasmine, uh, a great Woody Allen film if you haven't seen it yet. Sandra Bullock, Gravity, great performance, really held her own in the movie. Uh, Judy Dench, Philomena, and Meryl Streep, August, Osage County. Um... I would like to say it would be interesting to see Judy Dench win for Philomena because from what I've heard, it's gotten rave reviews, and I know that she probably is not far from retiring just due to health. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I know that's one of the reasons why she left the James Bond franchise because her eyesight is going very bad. Um, yeah. Meryl Streep loved her performance. Kind of the same lines with Martin Scorsese, not her best work. And also, it's Meryl Streep. She wins everything. You have to be, <laughs> you have you have to be anti Meryl sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's 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 hard. I must say, I'm a little biased. My fiance went to school with with the college with her daughter at Vassar. Oh, uh, G- uh, Gummer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they both went to Vassar. They were the same year. So luckily, my fiance had a nice uh, graduation with Meryl Streep being there. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, so. I, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna bet against Meryl Streep. She wins me everything. Per- <laughs> me, me personally, I would be very happy if I saw either Amy Adams or Sandra Bullock win. For me personally, looking at it statistically, it's a toss-up between Meryl Streep and, and Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock did an amazing job in Gravity. She really did. So to pick between the two is hard because <laughs> you're talking about two 
huge A-listers that are phenomenal. And Sandra Bullock has done just as good a job almost as building up her cred as Sandra Bullock. Obviously, Meryl Streep's been around a little bit longer than Sandra Bullock, but Sandra Bullock is putting herself right up there in that category of actresses mm-hmm. with Meryl Streep. So it wouldn't be shocking to see Sandra Bullock win this. I would. I think I want her to win for this. Amy Adams, again, one of my favorite movies, American Hustle. Probably my favorite movie of the year. So, I will say, again, uh, yeah, like you said, that'd be fun to see Amy Adams win. She definitely deserves to win one of these. I don't think she's getting it for her role in American Hustle. I think as far as people, I was blown away by Sandra Bullock would probably be my top choice. Yeah. I could pick Sandra Bullock, but I think I'm going to stick with the, with Meryl Streep. She doesn't seem to lose a lot. It would be hard. No. Um... <laughs> if I'm a betting man, it's going to be Meryl Streep. So, and I mean, she won I for Julie game. and Julia, for crying out loud. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You don't you don't bet you don't bet against her. It takes well, us to bo- best actor. <laughs> I'll vote for Sandra Bullock, you vote for Streep. <laughs> That's fine. Who knows who's gonna win? Pick a name out of a hat with that group. Yes. Yeah, same yeah. same really goes for best actor in a leading role. Oh, Christian Bale, American Hustle, Bruce Dern, Nebraska, Leonardo DiCaprio and the Wolf of Wall Street. Chudel Ajofor for twelve years of slave. I'm totally butchering that name. Probably should have Googled that. Matthew McConaughey, Dallas Buyers Club. I will say that if Christian Bale were to win, after seeing how they played him off the stage for Best Supporting Actor, I would love to see him just go off. It's like, you see this? You see this? I'm Best Actor. You give me one more minute. You give me one more minute. (laughs) I was fucking Batman. Okay, I would take a Batarang... And I will kill you with it. Right. Nolan said I could take some. Right. <laughs> this is another one. Pick a name out of a hat. Um, like I said, Leo won with, for the Golden Globes. Great pick. What time Leo they both did? Well, yeah. Leo was awesome. He was, but so was McConaughey. He, he put so much on the line for this film. He was. And, he and looked I'll, like he was near death in that movie, I mean, just because he lost he, so much weight. He literally looked like he was dying. Even at the Golden Globes, he looked sickly. Yes. I mean, the man was filming Interstellar like while he was shooting this, which just freaks me out because I'm gonna see like a a starving Matthew McConaughey in a movie about space. <laughs> right. I don't. Uh, I think. But as far as performance-wise, though, I think this could be one of the best things he's done since, I mean, A Time to Kill, Lincoln Lawyer. I mean, yeah. he really took a bet on this movie. But I think Matthew McConaughey, as much many people would think, you know, I think back to Days Confused, stoner Matthew McConaughey. I think McConaughey's a smart man. I think he knew that there was something to go with this project. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, that movie was made for $5 million. It was shot for very low, very low sum. Uh, it was a brand new director, a French director by the name of Jean Marc Vallee. Um, and just, I mean, take a look at the cast. I mean, uh, there's only really three. Jennifer main stars. Garner, Jennifer Garner, she didn't get and any. Jared movie. Leto. I think if Jennifer Garner had a bigger role, she may have gotten some for this. Got got some more credit for this, but she. Her role was pretty limited. This was a, yeah. this was Jared Leto, Matthew McConaughey show, and they owned this movie. I, I oh, knew that this was a good movie going in, but had was really sucked in and blown away by how good this movie was. And it wouldn't have been anything without Matthew McConaughey and Jared Leto. You take really any, you could take any two A listers. I don't care who, I don't care who you, you could throw in Clooney. Pitt, I don't care who you throw in there. This movie is not what it is without McConaughey. <laughs> Pitt could have been the drag. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. I will, say, I will say this. My ultimate pick for this, uh, as much as I'd love to see Bale or Bruce, or even the legendary Bruce Stern, which, I mean, 
we have to give him at least you know uh, uh, you know at least a round of applause because he is he is Legend truly one of the greats. Dairy. Uh, I will say that personally, I would like I, I want Leonardo DiCaprio to win. I want him to win. He has been looked over so many times, and it is just so unfair. Yeah. Um, I still personally think he should have gotten one for Great Gatsby because he took F. J F. Scott Fitzgerald's troubled character and just made it his own. And of course, Django Unchained. He. Oh, I mean, off. he. Even though even though he was not in it that long, he was such a just an evil character in that movie that you loved and you despise so much. Okay, speaking of that, can I take us down a rabbit hole here? Since we're speaking sure. of Django, I'm I'm going down the rabbit hole. Okay, you go got, down. I know, you got hole. A, I know you got eleven minutes, but we're going there. Oh, right, go ahead. So with Django, okay, and awesome movie, one of my favorites. Very awesome, amazing. Christoph Waltz was phenomenal in it, but Tarantino doing it's a western. We know what happened recently. He is writing a script for another Western. Some yeah, hateful asshole, hate. some asshole agent leaked it or gave it to a writer, and it got leaked. And then he Tarantino, sure. Tarantino went on a shit fit and was like, "Fine, as he's one to do. Fine, fuck it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do a movie." But see, the thing with Tarantino is that I'm, man I'm has a, so I'm much writing, time on his hands. I'm gonna write another movie. That's one script out of what, maybe a pile of twenty he's probably got or started working on. But that was like a baby project. That was like a pet project. It was. It was. And you know what? I don't think it's dead. As much of a bitch fit as he threw, I give it give it another couple of years. We'll we'll start hearing it again. I I guarantee him to you he'll have that under lock and key though. We'll see. He may maybe he just rewrites it or, or something. He talked about maybe I'll just do something else with it. And I was like, do yeah. a comic. Do a comic. Oh, that would be epic. Tarantino comic. This would be brilliant. Yeah. It would be perfect. But yeah, that's I was just pissed because that we were close to having another Tarantino movie and then it got ruined because the script got leaked and but, I mean, sucks. in all honesty, it would have probably come out when? 2015? Yep. Look at what we've got 2015. 2015 is probably going to be the biggest year of films that I think we've ever seen. We say that every summer almost. But, yeah, it's it's turning out to be pretty epic with some strong Hunger hunger, hunger Games, Aven, Av, well, Avengers 2, Avengers Ant 2, Man, uh, Episode 7. Yes. Yeah, Star Wars Avatar coming back. Avatar 2. I think that's going to end up losing that. I think that's going to be oh, one of your course. losers of of the of the summer with everything else coming out. Wrong year, sorry. What Avatar 2 is not next year? Uh, no, I think it is. I'm just going to say it's going to lose to everything else that's coming well, out. Well, of course. And there's no way that they can 3D is dead. No one hardly anyone cares except for Except for our kids that are going to movies that have to wear glasses when they go, so <laughs> keep so we we can keep doing all this 3D stuff for the most part. Maybe some high frame rate. We'll see how this all goes, but I don't think people care all that much about 3D, especially when ticket prices are approaching twenty dollars. I think IMAX is where it is, and that's why I respect Christopher Nolan. He's I love not IMAX. afraid. He's not afraid of 3D, but he knows IMAX is the way to go. I think that is definitely the best experience. If you can find an IMAX with an Dolby Atmos, which are few and far between, those of you on the coast, you lucky bastards, there's no Atmos hardly in the Midwest, and Kansas City has one, Texas has one, Chicago. That's the best movie experience to have. Any, any man who's far. got the balls, and I say balls because he's got big balls, to strap an IMAX camera... To a freaking Lear jet, mm -hmm. just to shoot a, <laughs> below ground, takes the nose off of a Lear jet and shoves an IMAX camera in there just so he can get one shot. Is a visionary in my book. He's awesome. He's awesome, hands down. We've only got a few minutes left. We got to wrap this up, unfortunately. We do. We do. But uh, my pick, Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm not going to disagree with that, but I'm going Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey deserves it. 
easy. Well, I think we both can agree clubs. we would be very happy for both. Yep, that's gonna be that's another toss up. This year is really hard. Last year was way easier. I will than say this. this though. I would I would find it very hysterical if Matthew McConaughey came up because we all saw a speech for the Golden Globes. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> right. He came up on the stage and looked at Leo and went like uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Which if we know Matthew McConaughey the way we think we would, I would not put that past him. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Because he was awesome in that too. <laughs> that that role, that role, and that he talked about how he did that. He's like, yeah, that's how I, I, I do. I get ready for my scenes. He's like, I, I bump my chest, and next thing you know, it becomes <laughs> this whole thing throughout the whole movie of oh, yeah. this whole thing of that's how greed. Of, that was the sign for greed. It was it was just awesome. <laughs> Just how a pre-camera thing becomes this whole thing through an entire movie is awesome. Very true, very true. That's part McConaughey, part Scorsese right there. Mm-hmm. Best picture, we've talked about some of our favorites. American Hustle, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, Gravity, Her, Nebraska, Philomena, 12 Years of Slave, Wolf of Wall Street. We've talked about some of these. One that I'd like to talk about that, we, that didn't get as much credit, Her... Awesome movie. I don't know if it's just because I'm a tech geek and I love Siri and I talk to Siri all the time. I'm not in love with Siri necessarily, but the movie was awesome. It was, It really was a great movie. I've never seen a movie where the entire male population wears their pants at hip level, <laughs> like chest right. level. Um, and that's uh, not not to go back down the rabbit hole, but that was one thing. And I do have to say, is one thing I was incredibly pissed off about is that Joaquin Phoenix did not get a nomination for her. No kidding. I I was shocked. It was him and his phone for most of the movie. And it, and was, it was a awesome. very dramatic performance. It was very, it was very, a uh, very touching, dramatic performance. Yes, people who haven't seen this, get off your ass and go get her. Go find it. It's out there. Go to the movie theaters. When does this come out? When does this come out on Blu-ray? It's got to be coming out uh, here soon. Yeah, probably the next couple of months. I'd probably say next month if it's not out now. Let's see. Her... Captain Phillips is out. Dallas Buyers Cap- Club Gravity is out. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street comes out next month. Philomena comes out, I think, the end of this month. Twelve Years a Slave next month. And Captain Phillips comes out the end of this month. Yeah, her still does not have a release date. It'll probably be around probably end of March. Yeah. It probably it go see it get it when it comes out for those of very you who know other movie. means it's very available. Uh, it and it was a great movie all the way around. Joaquin Phoenix deserved a lot more credit for that movie. It kind of flew under the radar. Very true. Love love that movie. It's not going to win an award here, so we'll move on. American Hustle again. The best comedy in the last ten years, probably. There's in a different, just because it was such a different movie, it was done in such a different way. No one had had approached comedy this way ever. It tells a funny story, has great characters, as we've talked about, and really, really could win Best Picture if it were not this year, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Any other year, American Hustle is probably a no-brainer. Uh, we talked about Dallas Buyers Club. Great acting, good story. Talking about AIDS in 1985 it was done on no budget. A very inspirational story. Too. It was an inspirational story, and that's the type of thing you need to win Best Picture. Twelve Years a Slave kind of goes along with that, with that gut-wrenching story. That's the type of film that, unfortunately, the Academy goes for. Unless, I'm sorry, the Academy for Best Picture typically does not pick a movie that doesn't have some sort of impact on whether it be slaves or AIDS. That yeah. they they go for that thing. So, I mean, Twelve Years a Slave was a movie made to 
you know, be a movie that wasn't seen by a ton of people that just goes and wins, you know, the Oscar. Wolf of Wall Street, great movie. Probably not the one of my favorites of the year. Yeah. One of my favorites Mine for sure. Well. I don't think it's gonna win. I mean, it has a chance. It has it, a chance. It, it has I a don't. better chance than I'd probably say her, like Captain Phillips. Her, Captain Phillips, Philomena. Nebraska, I would even say, maybe has a chance. Nebraska could be would, one. Nebraska could be one of those who could win a bunch of these awards that we completely it really overlooked could. and were completely. Yeah, it would work. And then we get screwed for this whole pick. <laughs> Me personally, I'd say my pick is going to be Twelve Years a Slave. Just the simple fact that it's it's such a as as horrifyingly violent as it is, and it's very violent. Don't kid yourself. I mean, we're dealing with a man who was born a free man and then is pretty much taken from a life that he's done nothing but work for. He's talented, taken from his family for over 20 years. Or no, was, I'm sorry, 12 years, my bad. Uh, yep. And I mean, is tortured as a slave. And I mean, it's just... And the, the film is shot so beautifully in New Orleans. I mean, just where they shoot and stuff like that. And the cast is very, very talented. You got a lot of A-listers. You got Michael Fassbender, uh, the the uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor, Alfre Woodard, uh, Brad Pitt is a Canadian abolitionist, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, Paul Giamatti, and Paul Dano. I mean, just such a terrific cast. Gotta love Giamatti. I bet, yeah, I, I would say me personally, I would be happy if like Wolf of Wall Street or American Hustle won. But my vote, I'm gonna go with Twelve Years a Slave. I'm gonna have to pick that with you too. Uh, it's it's gonna win. There, are, I I think that there. It was an impactful movie, and it's one of those movies you watch once and it rips your heart out, and you're like, oh. But I mean, I will even watch. I will watch Wolf of Wall Street a couple more times, even though it's like two and a half hours of my life. It's like two forty five. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Make it worse, but it's awesome. American Hope you Hustle. Don't have any work that day. <laughs> right. American Hustle. I will watch many times again. So just for replay value and fun movies to watch, I think Wolf of Wall Street and American Hustle and Dallas Buyers Club were better movies. I just can't see going back and watching Twelve Years a Slave again. It's like I'm not putting myself through that. Yeah, so, it's I mean, almost like Lone maybe, Survivor. That, maybe, maybe that's what makes it the best picture. But again. I'm. I will be buying her. I will be buying American Hustle. I will be buying Wolf of Wall Street. Captain Phillips it was a good movie. Tom Hanks did a great job. That movie's getting completely overlooked because of all the other epic movies this year. That again, that's another tale of you know I will pirate say ship. This. Uh, since you brought up Tom Hanks, I'm surprised that uh, Saving Mr. Banks. I was surprised that movie didn't get any love, as well as Lone Survivor. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not well, I mean, surprised. I would have at least thought, you know, maybe Tom Hanks for a supporting actor role, and then at least Emma Thompson is a uh, actress contender. Mm, yeah, I can see it, but I'm not surprised by exactly, any stretch of the yeah. imagination. With this, I mean, there was lots of. I mean, a lot of these really came out towards the end of the year too. I mean, this yeah. wasn't. We're not looking at the summer blockbusters, you know, that made. <laughs> Two hundred fifty million dollars, like Hunger Games did. Not, yeah, very I mean, true, very true. I mean, if you want to talk about it, I mean, why don't you have Hunger Games in there again? It's like I guess because you can't, you can't nominate Jennifer Lawrence twice, or you don't want to nominate her twice. <laughs> but that was, I mean, that was a great sequel. It was yeah, I, better than the first movie. And uh, I think we have to mention. And the third one's got a yeah, well. Yeah, well, the problem is the next the next movie is gonna suck because they're splitting it into two, and the first part of that book sucked. So what I was gonna say is Catching Fire, of course, and which will probably be shown at the Oscars this year. A uh, very touching performance by uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, uh, one of his final roles before his death. That's depressing to even talk about, but yes, yeah. And I'm sure there'll probably be something at the Oscars, uh, an in memoriam. One would hope so. 
Well, with him being an Oscar winner himself, I'm sure there will be something. Yeah. Because the Academy does like to take care of, or honor their own. Mm Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, that's 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 a whole that's a topic for another day. Yeah, overall, though, I think it's gonna be a great. I think it's gonna be a great award show. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. it seems like there it seems like a lot of great categories, a lot of great contenders. Ellen DeGeneres is back doing the Oscars. Uh, she gonna always be does awesome. a pretty great job. It's gonna as be long hilarious. She wear the duck dress. Yeah, she can do what she wants. Eh, yeah, she's Ellen. Yeah, she's, she's, she's Ellen. Below, she's a little bit below Oprah, but she's she still got power. She's 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 almost a white Oprah. <laughs> very she true, doesn't have, very she true. doesn't have the money yet. She's working. Very true. She's working towards it. I don't think she cares as much though either. <laughs> yeah, I probably not. But I think it'll be a solid show. Um, and I think it'll be a good. I, show. I look forward to it very much. It's going to be exciting to see what happens. Like I said, lots of great movies. I know we kind of ran it kind of long here tonight. So hopefully you guys made it through the whole thing. Tell us what you think. Let us know on tmstash.com. Send us your thoughts. I'm uh, at Stephen Magali on Twitter. I follow at run at tmstash. Tweet us. Let us know what you think. Well, John and I will be back for the post Oscar show. Get a find out everything that we got wrong probably here tonight. <laughs> So, but thanks for joining me tonight, John. We'll do it again here uh, at the end of the weekend. Again, Pleasure uh, to be here. I'm uh, again. I'm at Stephen Magali, and uh, that's uh, John Gruscio. Everyone, guys, have a good night. <laughs>